All right, so we are at a few minutes after 6.30. The uh, meeting of the planning board will come to order tonight. Anna, could you please call the roll? Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. Bob Belmore. Here. David Witham. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Paul Rabitis. Here. All right, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approved by Mr. Horton. Second. Second by Mr. Berry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, committee reports, land use boards are in the memo as distributed. Um, Mr. Whittem, City Council. Yeah, briefly on City Council, the uh, solar field project on the Superfund landfill is, uh, construction of that is imminent uh, with completion uh, hopefully by uh, the time winter gets here this year. So. Um, that's good news, right? That's been a project that's been in the works for a number of years with a number of hurdles, uh, EPA and, and otherwise. So uh, that, that's like a big deal. So we're very excited about that. Uh, City Council is also uh, finalizing um, approval of the purchase of some uh, software for uh, building uh, permitting, uh, things of that nature. So uh, developers will be able to do some of that online. Uh, we will still maintain the old pen and paper method for those that are old school, but uh, we are modernizing the practices there. It's going to be much easier for our building and code officials to track uh, what's going on in the city and, again, allow an online presence for that level of activity. So uh, report for tonight. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Richardson, as RPC. Yeah, um, we have a meeting on Friday, so there's really nothing new to uh, report since the last one. And uh, Mr. Barry, anything for Horizon 30? I do I have a number of things to report. So we had a really, a really good conversation. Regretfully, I was a little late to it, but um, some of the topics that were covered. Um, so there was the discussion about creating identities for neighborhood communities. Um, I was really uplifted by this conversation. Um, so supposedly, um, other cities like Manchester have already adopted this, where they have certain parts of town that uh, drive pride, drive engagement, things of that nature. So these are things that are going to be looked into um, and possibly worked into the master plan. So one really neat topic. Uh, another topic that came up was discussing traffic calming in downtown for pedestrian safety. So that will also be looked at in detail. Um, another topic that was, that was thrown out there was uh, participatory budgeting, which is kind of like a community flex fund, uh, for lack of a better term, which could be a way for the community to uh, basically put forward ideas to council for potential uh, updates, right? Uh, another thing that came up was a oral history series. So that could either be an in-person uh, where people talk about their experiences in, in the city, you know, uh, either with a moderator and, and uh, either a speaker or just uh, different residents coming in just talking about what the city used to be. Um, could also be a recorded series as well. So there, there's a lot of really neat stuff coming out in, uh, in the eyes on 2030. Um, one other thing that's really important, uh, we do have a, our first Don't Trash Summersworth event coming up in the month of April. So on 420, that's a Saturday from 2 to 3, uh, we will be meeting in the Home Depot parking lot. We're going to be focusing on Commercial Drive and that general area, Will and Drive. Um, so bags, grabbers, vests, and basic supplies will be provided. But if, if you do want to come, this is open to the public. Uh, bring your own PPE. So uh, gloves, uh, steel-toed boots if you feel it necessary. Um, everything else will be supplied. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Horton, anything from Community Power? Uh, sure. Community Power uh, has not met the uh, electric aggregation plan and, and the responsibilities going forward. Have been transferred to uh, City Council. Uh, so yeah, uh, City Manager, you want to speak? Yeah. When you were done, I was just it, to be recognized. Yeah, yeah. uh, council <coughs> approved uh, the City Manager signing the agreement with the coalition. I I did that, and it's been sent to them. So the uh, member agreement, the cost sharing agreement, has been signed, and the policies that we need to abide by have been accepted by the City Council. So we're moving forward. So we should have a launch date in the very near future. Thank you. Any other uh, committee reports to share this evening? Sure, just uh, one on the committee report to report on uh, 
The Mayor's Housing Task Force uh, met tonight prior to this meeting with members from the uh, Conservation Committee, Zoning Board, as well as Planning Board members uh, to with SRPC, Stratford Regional Planning Commission, leading the meeting to discuss uh, future goals uh, related to housing and transportation on what we'd like to see and work on in the coming months uh, in regards to revising city ordinances to support our goals. So that's all I got. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. All right, moving on to old business. Uh, any old business to come before the board this evening? Okay, not hearing any, we'll move on to new. Uh, so our first item, Hideout Golf LLC, seeking a site plan amendment for a two-phase project to construct a patio area and practice tee on an existing golf course located at 100 Hideaway Place in the CI District, Map 50, Lot 11, Site 7-24. So this is be a public hearing. So let's grab the staff report for that first. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant is proposing a two-phase uh, project for improvements to the existing golf course. Phase one includes construction of a 16 by 200 practice tee and patio area with food, beverage, bathroom, and walkways. Phase two includes the construction of a 16 by 100 practice tee. Uh, this property is located with the, within the recreational and commercial industrial district. The site improvements are, are located within the recre recreational portion of the lot. Uh, the proposal is compliant with all of our zoning. Okay. Thank you. I'll invite the uh, applicant to present. Hi, I'm Paul Blanc with Norway Plains Associates. Um, Hello? Yeah, there you are. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing going. All right, I'm Paul Blanc with Norway Plains Associates, um, here representing the Oaks or Hideout Golf LLC. Um, you have an application in front of you, um, which we presented on February 28th. Um, we went to the SRTC meeting. Um, we got comments. This meeting took place on March 8th. Um, we went through, addressed all the comments. Um, we believe they're satisfactory. Um, we are requesting three waivers for landscaping, boundary plan, traffic study, and a drainage study. Um, we are asking that you accept this application as complete. Do we have a motion to accept the plan as complete and ready for study? Can I offer a comment first? Please. Yeah, I don't know if it's needed, but I did sign the application because the city owns the land. So uh, we do lease it to the corporation that's involved there. So I don't see a conflict, but if people are uncomfortable with that, I just signed the application. I had nothing to do with the, uh, outlining the proposal, working with the applicant and, uh, or, the, uh, or the engineer that was done by city staff. So just wanted to put that out there. I'd move that we accept the plans as complete for review. Second. Second by Mr. Berry. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. So, uh, open for public comment uh, first. Anyone here to speak on this item? All right. Not hearing any. Uh, Do we have a motion for regional impact? Mr. Wyden? Yeah, I'd move that the project does not have any potential for regional impact. Second. Second by Mr. Abadis. Uh, any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Oh, Mr. Richardson, sorry. I was seconding it. Oh, seconding. Mr. Abadis already got that out. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Any opposed? Thank you. All right. I'll open this up to uh, questions from the board. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, this is part of a long-term plan to improve the property over the next uh, uh, number of years. Uh, it's a well-maintained property. It's uh, utilized as intended. 
uh, the particular uh, scope of projects in front of us are on land that is already developed, if you will. It's an enhancement to what they're already doing. Um, uh, it fits into the design of what they're doing. So I have no trouble with this project, and all of the waivers make sense, in my opinion. So um, as far as I'm concerned, this is a green light all the way through. Mr. Richardson? Yeah, and maybe it's me, but I, I read through it, and I was still a little bit confused. And in, in one area, it talks about the 16 by 200 practice tee in the patio and the food and beverage and bathroom and walkways. And then in the second, the, the line below it says 16 by 100 practice tee. Are we talking about two tees or practice tees, or is all of that other stuff included in the 16 by 200? There's two practice tees. Okay, that, 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 that's, that's all I need to know because that was... Okay, yep, that's fine. I was just confused whether there was one or two, and that's it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Any other questions? Mr. Horton? I don't want to belabor the point either, but uh, I just want to agree with Mr. Witham here. Uh, you know, I agree with the waivers. You know, I don't think we need landscape design here. It's going to be pretty well open. So in addition to the waivers for traffic studies, I don't think that they're warranted as well. So uh, I'm in favor of the, ap of the application as well. Thank you. Do you have three waiver requests out here? So looking for a motion on the first of those, which would be for the landscape plan. Mr. Wood? Yeah, I'd move that the waiver request from the landscaping requirement be approved with no conditions. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Whittem, second by Mr. Horton. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Right. So that is approved. Uh, waiver number two requested is for a full boundary survey. Do we have a motion on that item? Mr. Whittem. Yeah, similarly, uh, move that the waiver request uh, to not require the full boundary survey be approved. Second. Second, Mr. Abitis. Any discussion on this item? All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? No. All right, and the third waiver for a traffic study. That'd be three for three. It's better than striking out. Um, I'd move that the request uh, of a waiver for a traffic study uh, be approved. Second. Second, Mr. Bettis. Any discussion on this item? All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. And finally, we have the drainage study. Keep it going. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd move that the request for a waiver from the drainage study be approved. Second. Second, Mr. Abitis. Any discussion on this item? All right. All those in favor? Any opposed on this one? Better batting average than anybody will have on the Red Sox this mm -hmm. year. Mark my word. I need team. Mayors, can you run us through uh, the application request and requirements? Here's yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Plan revisions none. Conditions that must be met prior to final approval. The plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer, uh, licensed land sur surveyor. Uh, this needs to be updated to scratch out the landscape architect because they got a waiver from that. Uh, conditions to be completed prior to the start of uh, site work. Uh, construction cost estimates for the project shall be submitted to development services. A pre-construction meeting is required. An escrow account uh, is required in an amount set by the city's contract engineer and agreeable to the Department of Development Services, a performance surety in an amount uh, no less than 25% of the cost of site construction. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit. Erosion control shall be installed properly. Uh, landscaping survival uh, security is 10% of the total cost of landscaping or minimum of $500. Conditions applicable during and after construction, all new electrical lines shall be installed underground. There shall be no wetlands uh, degradation during construction. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection and maintenance report shall be provided to uh, the Department of Development Services annually on or before July 1st. All landscaping on the plan shall be maintained and any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced in a timely manner. All outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded, and as-built plans are required. Point of order. 
Uh, so given that we approved the waiver for the survey of boundaries, does the licensed land surveyor also need to be scratched? For, um, uh, I'm on paragraph A. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I would agree. Uh, second question and paragraph D. Um, is the surety, is the bond surety, I'm not saying that right. Surety. <laughs> is that 5% now from our last, or a couple previous meetings ago? Didn't we vote to change that to 5%? Is that, am I correct in that or is that? That's for uh, maintenance okay. after okay. road construction. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Wendy? Yeah, I don't know if you, were you referencing item G there, the landscaping survival? I was not. Oh. Uh, I was on D. Oh, I see it. You're on D. D. Uh, G, I'm not sure we need that either. I mean, it's, it's, we, we, we've waived that. And I think it also applies to 4D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, yeah. But uh, for 4G, they're putting in plantings, David. So do, do you want to protect those or? At least I thought I saw plantings. Yeah, I saw some fescue grass. Tall grass. Tall grass. Tall grass. Tall grass. That's correct. And it's in their best interest to keep it. <laughs> and does like that, that is landscaping. I mean, I, I'm thinking of landscaping as shrubs, bushes, yeah, trees. Please. Yeah, they're uh, not doing that. Yeah. That, here's what I think. They're not going to. It's not conducive to what they're trying to do if it's dead. Let it all die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it also, I'm just trying to apply a little common sense here, I think. It also strikes me that this is more of a seeding sort of situation than a actual landscape planting. So that's Correct. the case. Okay. Yeah. Not okay. Trying to be argumentative. No, that, that's fine. I'm okay with waving it, too. So. so with those items struck, any other discussion on the uh, conditions? All right. Looking for a motion then for the site plan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wedham? Sure. I'd move that the request of Hideout Golf LLC for a site plan amendment for a two phase project to construct a patio area and practice tee on existing golf course located at 100 Hideaway Place, 100 Hideaway Place, be approved with the conditions as just outlined by the planner and amended here tonight. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Woodham, second by Mr. Robitis. Uh, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. Quiet. <laughs> okay. Moving on then to item 4B, uh, Chinberg Builders, 200 Main Street LLC, is seeking a conceptual review for a post proposed three-building multifamily development located at 200 Main Street in the Milliard District, Map 9, Lot 282, Site 06-2024. So where this is a conceptual review, we're not looking at a public hearing, uh, but I'd like to invite the applicants or reviewers to present. Apologies. Uh, Michelle, an overview, please, first. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is proposing to redevelop property at, located at 200 Main Street. The proposal includes three residential buildings. Two of those are being new construction, and one is a reuse of an existing building uh, for approximately 152,000 square feet. Uh, the current proposal can. Uh, consist of 145 units along with underground and on-site parking. This site is approximately 5.47 acres. The number of units is conceptual and could be revised with a formal site plan submission. Uh, the site is accessed from River Street. The applicant is looking to discuss any site concerns for the project. They have indicated that they will be seeking a waiver uh, for the number of parking spaces. 1.5 parking spaces are required in the Milliard District, and they're looking to go down to 1.3 parking ratio. There's also uh, a waiver request from the Class B buffer yard. Uh, there's residential properties behind it, so... Um, it's required to have a buffer yard of 50 feet. Applicant is also requesting uh, 
feedback in regards to pedestrian access to Main Street and connections to other off-site public sidewalks and also uh, potential traffic study. The property is located in the Milliard District and form based codes, Milliard Subdistrict Area 5. Residential is permitted use in this district uh, on the first floor as well. And uh, the building, the new buildings are required to be a minimum of four stories high. Again, these are just conceptual plans for the planning board's discussion. Good evening. Uh, my name is Neil Raposo. I'm with Civil Consultants uh, here on behalf of uh, 200 Main Street LLC. Um, we've put together these conceptual plans for uh, proposed redevelopment of, of this site. Um, formerly uh, one of the uh, GE uh, Eclara uh, industrial development uh, sites. And previously there were several buildings that were constructed in um, you know, several different eras out here. Uh, the only remaining building on the site is uh, the brick building uh, that's noted here on this plan um, here as building A. Uh, this is existing brick building that is intended to be rehabbed uh, and reused uh, for residential apartments. Uh, there is proposed to be a connected building uh, adjacent to that with parking under. Um, this one's uh, noted as Building B uh, when we refer to it. Uh, and then uh, further down the hill, there's uh, what's called Building C, which is a larger building that's set down um, a little further down on the plat plateau as that hillside goes down, if you're familiar with the site. Uh, that will also have uh, parking under that structure, uh, and the remaining uh, residential apartment units will be in, uh, in that building. Uh, we've basically used utilized um, the existing infrastructure on the building uh, on the site as much as possible to give us uh, the parking required for uh, the units uh, that we are that we are looking to get in here uh, with that reduction in parking to 1.3 spaces per unit uh, and that's based on uh, historical uh, approvals uh, in the past as well as a uh, documentation that the uh, that the applicant has for several other properties that they maintain uh, with that parking ratio um, we have done just uh, initial reviews with, uh, with utilities uh, and, and engineering um, as we went out with a, for a site walk to kind of uh, look at some of the items that we had uh, on this plan for uh, water and sewer um, connections and uh, the conditions of those, uh, which was very helpful. We were able to get a lot, of, uh, a lot of good information off of those guys. Some of the information from the GIS needed to be updated, so uh, it was it was a good time to get out there and, and get ahead of everything here. Um, so this is more of a, a zoomed in look at the at the development. Um, we have some open space patio spaces. This is kind of on an upper upper plateau. This is uh, essentially the foundation of one of the buildings that was historically here uh, that was burned and and demolished. So. Uh, it was left a, a raised concrete patio out there that's uh, eight or ten feet over this little drive that comes down through. So uh, it's a nice little overlook to the river. Um, the remaining parking areas, this is an existing parking lot that's, uh, that's on site that would just be a rehab to, to be able to uh, meet all the current standards. Uh, several of these um, spaces out here, this one utilizes existing um, uh, foundation walls to kind of create the retaining walls for this uh, for this parking area uh, to the west here um, and uh, the remainder of the site uh, will be landscaped and these uh, the shrubs and trees that are shown on my conceptual sketch uh, don't constitute the landscape plan that will be provided obviously there will be a, a landscape architect involved who will be uh, doing the full of uh, the full design on this we just kind of wanted to show the scope of of um, uh, you know the amount of plantings that that could be uh, that could be existing out here and the overall uh, coverage of the site just as far as the pavement and the buildings go uh, and really mask the site and, and, and show you what we have planned. Um, go down to the next sheet here and this, uh, this at this point this uh, doesn't show all of the utility information that is currently available to us. Uh, this was all based on a 2005 existing condition survey that we uh, used to get the conceptual plan done. I uh, will be doing a full uh, utility survey of the property to make sure everything's up to date and we 
I try to run in as few surprises as possible. Uh, there's always something, but uh, we want to try and get a handle on everything uh, very early on in the process here. Uh, so this, um, we have spot grades shown on that, on that sheet. They're very hard to see on 11 by 17s, I know. Uh, we've kept all the grading uh, throughout the site, uh, through the parking lots and uh, the driveways to uh, reasonable, you know, reasonable slopes, uh, which is, is a challenge on, on this site. I'm sure some of you are fairly familiar with it, and it's, it really uh, drops down quite a bit from uh, the train tracks here. This is the, the train, the railroad lot is up top on this side, uh, and it drops all the way down to where that retaining wall is, right at the river. Um, the project uh, is including uh, a lot of rehab of uh, existing and proposed um, pedestrian ways on the site. Uh, this is currently uh, an abandoned sidewalk and, and pathway that, that used to be utilized uh, by the workers at the site, and it uh, enters into the, to the Eclara property um, uh, to, the, to the, I guess this would be the, uh, the north side of, of the property over here. So they're just really trying to bring back some of that um, you know, some of the usability and the walkability of the site um, as opposed to how, you know, how it's kind of deteriorated uh, in the past 20 years. Uh, I guess I, I'll open it up to Paul to kind of give you another brief overview and another, you know, another aspect of the development. Thanks, Neil. Um, Paul Goodwin here, uh, Senior Project Manager at Chimberg Properties. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, to feedback on, on the connectivity piece there, the walkway that he, uh, Neil, highlighted on uh, page south that uh, uh, connects to Eclara, it's existing. Uh, we're showing it here in hopes of being able to uh, reconnect that to uh, the Eclara site, which would be the fastest pedestrian connection to the downtown, um, which is required as uh, part of zoning, having a sidewalk. <clears throat> um, unclear uh, at this point whether or not we will have the right to have entry on their site, so that is, uh, uh, some hopeful connection. Um, it's possible that we would build that and then it would just end at the Eclara site until that site changed, hand, <coughs> changed hands if we had the opportunity to connect there. Um, we, in lieu of that, or in addition to that, we would also have a sidewalk uh, down our driveway. Um, it, not shown in the sheet, but the uh, property has a very long skinny neck that comes out on River Street. Um, and essentially our frontage is the curb cut. <laughs> so a uh, very unusual site, but we think we have enough room in there to get uh, our driveway and a, a sidewalk in. Um, another uh, component to bring to your attention is that we are anticipating to build out a river walk uh, that would be publicly accessible. Again, this is limited by um, our butters. Uh, both uh, properties on the north and south side are owned by Clara. Um, and uh, it's beyond the ability of, of uh, this project to complete the river walk, but we would be able to build out the section that we control and um, in hopes that future development would be able to make it more contiguous. Um, that same narrative is true. If you look at <clears throat> page left of this plan, the uh, lot F, I think there, you see a road that's connecting into the Clara site. Same story, existing road. Um, when the site was uh, owned by the same entity. Um, that was obviously an access point. There's a fence there now, it's overgrown. Um, but we would anticipate to essentially build up to the lot line with the ex expectation that at some point in the future that the uh, Clare property would get redeveloped and that that would be uh, an opportunity for access. Um, to build off a little bit of what Neil said as well, we're <coughs> looking to amenitize the site um, you know, for our residents' uh, comfort, uh, including in celebrating the industrial heritage of the site uh, by um, preserving the building remnant and making this very um, uh, interesting patio overlooking the river. Um, we're also retaining many of the historic building foundations and uh, for retaining structures, not many, some I should say. Um, and the site will definitely have a very, it's a very industrial site, very industrial context. So the image I uh, provided you guys shows uh, an aerial of the site in 1956, which was when the site was fully built out before any of the multiple fires have occurred. Uh, and it's just useful to see that the site was truly fully built out um, historically. A lot, a lot of impervious surfaces here, a lot of uh, retaining structures, foundations, etc. Um, uh, 
uh, that is relevant to one of the items we are going to need to request from the planning board, which is a conditional use permit for repairing wetland setback, I believe. Um, <clears throat> as the existing uh, uh, roadways parking and the new proposed building are in that setback area, but the site is um, within the urban exempt zone uh, with NHDES. Uh, unfortunately, the Summersworth regulations do not provide uh, any sort of relief, um, even though the site is urban exempt, so we are still required to go to the Conservation Commission um, and to seek that conditional use permit from you, even though uh, at the state level, we are not obligated uh, to do any additional permitting. Um, in terms of look and feel, so uh, Chimberg obviously has a long history of adaptive reuse and restoring the last remaining segment of uh, the mill complex is the driving uh, feature of the project, so the storehouse and the lower part of the page here. Um, we have developed uh, a model where we are able to get the economies of scale we need by doing an addition uh, to that structure. Um, that addition will have, you know, an elevator and uh, code compliant stairs and essentially is a sister building. They will operate together as one building. So really the project is two buildings, three structures. Um, our, we don't have any architectural uh, drawings for you at this early stage, but our intent is to try and find a vernacular that is respectful to the industrial context. Um, if you go down on the site, you'll see that uh, GE is omnipresent in the, in the foreground um, and having uh, uh, buildings here that are very residential in character um, would, would feel incongruent with the site. So we're trying to figure out a way to make these buildings both residential but also um, appropriate for the context. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a challenging site in general. A lot of, a lot of cost here in terms of site work and retaining. Um, uh, so, you know, there, we don't have the, the biggest budget on facade materials, um, but we are, we are thinking creatively about how to achieve um, a beautiful product uh, within those limitations. Um, what else? That's, that's oh. a bird's eye view. There's, a, there's another, um, another waiver I believe we need for the setback. The rear, rear well, setback, the buffer yard. The buffer, the buffer yard. Um, there needs to be a 50-foot buffer yard given the, s the size of the project. The existing building, Building A, is already within that buffer yard. Um, so we feel like the construction of Building B is consistent with the existing condition. So we're seeking relief from that buffer yard requirement. Um, as mentioned previously, we are also seeking parking relief for a 1.3 parking ratio rather than the 1.5 required by zoning. Uh, the 85 Elm Street project was approved with that same parking ratio and uh, in Schimberg's portfolio of 1,800 properties, we, um, we managed them to just under a 1.3 parking ratio. So um, we anticipate to be able to do the same here. Uh, and the unit count um, before you right now is really driven purely by how much parking we can fit on the site. So if we could fit more spaces, we would have more units. If parking goes away, units will go away. Um, so it's gonna be driven by that 1.3 ratio. And as um, far as uh, traffic generation, that is something that, that we're, we're, yep, we're actively, actively researching now. We have a, an initial traffic assessment uh, basically complete. Um, I didn't, wasn't able to get it here for tonight, uh, but it basically comes out to uh, a 660 plus or minus uh, daily trips and uh, a 57 per, uh, 57 peak hour trips, which does not treat the, which does not trigger the, uh, the need for a full traffic study by an engineer to go out and do traffic counts and uh, that portion of it. Uh, the majority of this, uh, this site, when it was previously built out, even um, uh, its last use uh, in the 90s uh, had uh, a much more intense, you know, parking demand and, and traffic demand. Uh, it was calculated that on, upon full build out, there was uh, just over 2,000 trips per day. And I don't know if anybody's been around long enough to know, you know, what, what the downtown was like there. Uh, but for this one, uh, it's, it's intended to be a more spread out, uh, more spread out traffic uh, than historically in there. Um, as far as the, uh, the connection to, uh, to river, uh, there's very little, 
there's very little leeway in what can be done with that. Uh, you'd basically be cleaning up that uh, that end of that end of the driveway and pulling that out and bringing it out to a full, uh, you know, 24 or 20 foot width, uh, depending on on how we lay out the lay out the sidewalk out there. Uh, and we basically did these uh, emergency emergency vehicle access plans just to indicate how they could move around the site uh, safely, and they had the clearances they need. Uh, this was kind of a worst case scenario, bringing a ladder truck in, uh, you know, coming in this direction, which is not optimal, but uh, it shows that it, it does work without, uh, without encroaching on uh, neighboring properties. So uh, beyond that, um, do you have anything to add, yeah, Paul, or any questions? Yeah, more things that came to mind. Um, so we did a plan, as you can see here, for turning radiuses, knowing that that is a priority um, and the site is just unusual in terms of its grades and um, circulations. So we did a first pass at that, including a turnaround at the main entry of uh, Building C there. Um, we have conceptual placement for a dumpster corral nearby. We've also plopped a couple of transformers, which we've learned have to move already. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, in terms of the curb cut, uh, I can't make any commitments to you, but I'm certainly interested in talking to our butters to see if we might be able to get an easement or something f to control a little bit more of that entry point. We are gonna want signage, we're gonna want landscaping, we're gonna want a light. Um, you know, decorative light, um, TBD, if I will be able to secure um, any of those rights to sort of do those improvements. Otherwise, we're, we're kind of stuck with the, the curb cut as it is. Um, and then on the planting front, um, we are working with a landscape architect, Doug Greiner. Um, Doug uh, is actually very familiar with Summersworth. He um, was hired for the 2010 master plan. So all of the, the hand drawings you see in the master plan are, are Doug. Um, so I was telling him, like, oh, yeah, we were interested in putting a river walk down there. He's like, yeah, I drew it in the master plan. I was like, great. <laughs> you know what you're doing. Um, he's been instructed to, uh, he's been given the native planting list, instructed to use native plantings uh, to the, the full extent that we can. Um, and we are also aware that there are some invasives on site, and we'll be um, looking to manage those appropriately. Um, environmentally. Uh, the site is more or less clean because we received a brownfield grant after one of the fires to do remediation. And as far as the as far as the environmental portion of it, um, the intent on this one is to try to treat as much of this parking area uh, at the point of of um, you know, runoff generation as possible. Uh, so there will be uh, BMPs and filters. Uh, kind of throughout the site as opposed to trying to uh, push it all down to one, you know, corner of the site, treat it all there and dump it out. Um, trying to go to more of that, you know, low impact development approach um, has, you know, has proven to be, uh, you know, a challenge in some sites, but luckily here we have, uh, we have the grade that we can, we can kind of manipulate it uh, and be able to take advantage of some of those opportunities. So uh, we're looking forward to getting that going, but we're just in the early phases of, of sizing and, and trying to get the locations pinned down, so. Yeah, unless anybody wants to reference this. We got the players in front of us, yeah. Mr. Robitis, then Mr. Barry, then Mr. Richardson. You're going to have a lot of comments. Um, first of all, I'm real excited that Chinberg's taken on this project. If you've walked down there, I know with housing, we walked through there you know, maybe six or eight years ago, and that site needs a lot of work. So if there's anybody that's going to be able to pull this off, it's, it's going to be your agency. Um, one of the questions I didn't hear you discuss is there used to be that footbridge that was on Main Street. Was there any discussion about maybe putting that back um, yeah, I mean, not we, to say it's, you know we should have that but it would really that would connect that area as we, well we would love to but it's not in the budget unfortunately okay. it it um, we try to think of a way that we could configure the buildings and make a connection and it it's 
I think it's beyond uh, beyond the feasibility of this project, um, unless there's grant money kicking around <laughs> that we could go after. Um, it, there is some railroad grant money. Yeah, we I could, we could look into this. that. Yeah, um, if so you're yeah, interested. Be, yeah. yeah, maybe. I, I think the challenge might be um, before that. Uh, I mean, that was probably built before ADA, <laughs> but the challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the challenge is now that um, unless it, that empties into a building, it's about three stories above finished grade. So you're going to have stairs that come down. So I don't know from an ADA perspective if, if that's permissible. I would still be open to, you know, reviewing it because that is you know a fast connection to the the downtown, which we would prefer. But um, it's just not in the budget as we currently understand it. So the you know the other thing I. Uh, I I think about is you talk about 600 trips and that's going to generate some response from neighbors. I look at it a little different. I look at 600 more trips into our downtown. If we're going to have hopes of revitalizing our downtown and having more restaurants and more business, uh, we need we need people. We need foot traffic. And you know, 85 Elms going to you know add those units and then the units that you're going to add. I just I think that our downtown is on its way and this is another project that's going to help that. Um, as far as the parking, last thing I have, as far as the parking, the 1.3, you're right. Um, we granted that um, for the 85 Elm Street project. Um, I'm currently living in a Chinberg property now, and people work first shift, second shift, third shift. So you got people coming, you know, people leaving in the morning, and when they're leaving in the morning, the people that worked overnight are coming in. Um, I, I, I don't know if, what the amount of parking in the property that I'm living at, if it meets that requirement, but at the end of the day, you can see the turnover of traffic all out. What property are you at? Hilltop. Oh, okay. They've got, they've got plenty of parking. Yeah, there. But, you know, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's it's one of those where it's in and out all the time. Yeah. I mean, um, our, the Washington Street Mill, for example, is probably our tightest property, and I think it's a probably like a 1.2 or 1.1. 1, 1. It's, it's, and there's a lot of commercial there. Um, so that that's the one where it's just like my property management team has to be mindful. But m anything 1.3 and above, 1.3 is like we it's very, it's very little work for us to do. If you know, we just keep an eye on lease signings. Uh, to your point, people are on vacation. People work different shifts. Um, you know, just a fun anecdote uh, for in order for you as an average car driver to. Uh, own a, a single occupancy car, right? You just you driving to work, driving to the grocery store, driving to the mall. Uh, there needs to be eight redundant parking spaces for your car, so that there's a vacant spot for wherever you're going. So oh. it's a very inefficient model that we have in terms of having to build redundant parking. So it's important to us and the pro forma as well as density and walkability that um, we try and right size that and try and cut that that sort of redundant parking space down. But other than that, you know, I look at this, I'm excited. I'm excited to see that 85 Elm Street project happening. And with this here, it just cleans up another area of our community that uh, needs some work. So thank you for bringing that here. Ho hopefully uh, it happens. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berry, Mr. Mr. Richardson. Thank you. All right, so just to completely echo what Mr. Abida said, I am extremely excited about this. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a great use, uh, it's a great reuse of an otherwise destroyed property. You know, um, I, mean, I remember when the fire hit, I mean, that was, that was scary stuff. You know, and you guys are turning into something usable, something new, something fresh. And, um, you know, and the fact is that, you know, Kimberg has a reputation of having an amazing pedigree. You guys bring excellence to every project that you guys do. Uh, back with Civil Consultants Design Power, you guys are going to have one hell of a project. Very excited. Um, another thing that I want to toss out there. So um, you combine it with... with uh, with Elm Street, that's roughly 300 units out of the 750 units that we need by 2040 that we're, we're being told we need. That's roughly 40% of the way. That's a big deal to me that I'm over the top excited to see it. Um, I love the idea of the river walk. I know it's you're, you're going nowhere, but you know what? It, it takes one crazy nut to start a, uh, to start a revolution, right? So I, I'm, I'm excited. Put it in. Um, as far as the buffer yard waiver, I don't have a problem with, with that at all. Um, you got to train in your backyard. <laughs> who, who, who are you, who are you going to be irritating, really? That, that, to me, that's just silly. Um, the wetland waiver, I'm all for that as well. It's already disturbed. There's nothing there to, to disturb. Um, 
I am curious, the, so your water, I didn't see any drainage ponds. Are you planning on going infiltration? Um, yeah, for the most part, that's kind of what we're, we're going back and forth with now. Um, more than likely, it's going to be uh, a filtration mm. system for, for a lot of it. Uh, we'll have to go, go out and do test pits, see if the ground is, you know, able to actively handle uh, full infiltration. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be a series of filters at, you know, parking, parking areas, uh, possibly some pervious, but haven't really, haven't really looked too hard into that. A lot of these, we've kept those downhill sides um, uncurbed uh, to this point, so there will be availability to either break curb or have those uh, flow over into filter areas uh, downstream. Uh, there will be no large pond or, or, you know, retention area on the site. We're trying to get away from that in general. Um, just due to the fact that you have things like that and it ends up uh, increasing, you know, water temperatures, things like that. Uh, we're trying to really get that point of generation back into the ground uh, wherever we can. So, yeah, that's, that's Excellent. that is the plan we're trying to go with. Yep. Excellent. So, I mean, the good news is you're already working with disturbed ground. So anything you do is going to be an improvement. So happy to see that. Um, next thing, uh, for the facade, you know, I know you guys don't have architecturals yet, um, this, this one's going to be fun to, to watch. I mean, because after what we went through with, with, uh, with Elm Street, you know, it was all about, you know, where is it? You, know, you, you guys are in a completely different part of town. I mean, look at your neighbor right next door. It's brick. I mean, it's like a stone concrete block building, you know. So there, there's, more, there's more flexibility in your design choices. And hopefully I'm not the only one to say this, but I'm willing to be more flexible in the choices that you go with. I'm not going to say all brick. Yet again, it might not be you know, board and batten either, whatever you guys go with. But um, I look forward to seeing that concept that you guys come up with. Um, I agree also with Mr. Robitus about the parking. 1.3, to be fair, we did it for Elm Street. We should do it for you too. I mean, it's, it's, it wouldn't be fair to, to raise that number any for you. Then the last question I'm also curious, is there a wall going through the middle of the site? I, I think that's a wall. Uh, you have a T. You have a, you have a, you have, a, you have a T turning around, right? Currently existing, yeah. There's there's a T at the at the end of that what we're calling Building B, but it's the yeah. addition onto the the existing building. That T ends at uh, a retaining wall. At a retaining wall, okay. Um, just make sure that there is a either a, a small fence or some sort of restraining system. I, I can see myself driving right off the side of that. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, Beyond that, I love it. It's a, it's a great design. I'm, I'm excited to see the site plan uh, when it's finally ready. So thank you guys for coming in. Ms. Richardson. Yeah, thank you very much for, for all of this. Um, one of the questions I was going to ask you, you already addressed, is about public accessibility to the Riverwalk. Um, somebody's, I, I thank you for starting it. Uh, you know, that I've lived in this city for 44 years, and the issue of improving the river frontage has been around since probably before I moved here. I, and somebody is, I mean, we have the one part over there on Buffumville Road, but this is going to be spectacular, I think. Um, I, I, what a wonderful addition, and, you know, I hope that it continues in both directions after you take the lead on this. So thank you for that. Um, the outdoor um, area there where you have the outdoor patio, how high is that above the street level? As it's shown now, uh, it would be approximately 12 feet above the uh, street level down there. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't finished the, the final grading for um, that drive that goes up against the up against that river wall there. Mm -hmm. um, but currently that's where that where that basement slab is that's going to be turned into the patio we get, we have about uh, 12 to 13 feet and there's also quite a bit of fill that's kind of been pushed around that structure mm -hmm. so where we want to get a good existing conditions uh put together before we yeah. have a final elevation down below because so. one of the things i'm not sure this is possible then being that high because one of the things i was thinking of is where you have the crosswalk um in front of building um c the, the one that's closest to the river, uh, where you have that crosswalk to the river walk. I was I was wondering about one at the left hand corner there of uh, the patio area, but that would mean needing some stairway or some other kind of access to get down from there. Um, so I'd I'd like to see a crosswalk, but the reason why it doesn't make it 
any, any sense. Yeah, that, that, that's a bit of a graphic error. I mean, obviously, this is a very conceptual plan, but that sidewalk just dies into a 12-foot retaining wall. So yeah. <laughs> that probably won't oh, be okay. All right. final condition. Yep. Mr. I'm good. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> My thoughts and comments are really going to be consistent with what's already been said. Uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with the 1.3 parking. Uh, additionally, with the setbacks, I like the walkability of the site and um, what you guys have done to maintain existing and also provide additional um, walking paths throughout the site. Uh, additionally, I like the outdoor leisure space you've provided and the reuse of that foundation. Um, to Mark's point, I think it would be great if you had steps or stairs come, maybe coming off a side of it. Certainly no, not a showstopper, but um, maybe additional accessibility to it might be helpful. Um, I think uh, that you're certainly the challenge is going to be improvements and upgrades to your intersection on River Street. So I wish you best of luck with that. But uh, it sounds like you got the right ideas going forward for sure. Uh, wondering if it is, are you guys thinking it's going to be a four story? Or is that yeah, to it's be determined? A, it's a four stories of residential over one level of podium. So both the new structures are very, very similar to the Elm Street project um, in that from the high side, they are going to appear as a four story or maybe even a three story structure. And then from the low side, they will appear as a five or a six story structure depending on how grading works out. Um, we're just starting to crack that egg right now. Um, it's definitely challenging with the grade change on the site, but yeah. Four stories of residential, one of parking. Uh, my last comment is um, on that site, I remember in the past that, that there were decorative lamp posts. So if in the attempt to maintain consistency, it would be great to move forward uh, with additional decorative light posts that are consistent with existing. You want some salvage ones, they're out there, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm good right they're, now. Thanks. They're, 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 they're buried in uh, some shrubs. But um, yeah, I think the, that aesthetically is, is very achievable. Yeah. Thank you. Looking <clears throat> forward to it. Excited to see you. Mr. Redham. Thanks. Uh, can't say much more than what's been said here. I, as I look to the next phase, which would be coming back with a, a full site plan, um, I think if I'm in a butter, I'm thinking about a couple of things. One is the, the traffic, and I would agree. I don't think a, a full traffic study is needed here. Uh, I think we know what's going to happen. Uh, the traffic flow here is going to be very different than when it was an industrial site because people come and go throughout the day, even the evening, whereas with an industrial site, they come at the beginning and at the end of shift, right? So uh, the, the traffic is going to be more spread out. But, and I do agree that the vast majority of traffic, give me a number, uh, you know, uh, of the cars are going to just take a right out of your site and head out to Main Street and then disperse from there. So it's that small stretch of River Street over the tracks that's going to see the activity. So I think just, uh, you know, uh, we just need to be mindful of that. Um, I'm trying to remember what River Street looks like. I, I think it's pretty good on that end. So I'm not thinking there's much of an off-site improvement that's necessary there. Uh, I think the challenge is trying to make the entry into your site as accessible, inviting as, as it can be. And I, I like the thought of perhaps trying to work with the abutters there to see if uh, there's some land that could be purchased or uh, some sort of easement or something of that nature. I think that's uh, certainly important. The other is uh, the aesthetics of the site. I, I think that if I'm in a butter, that's uh, a thing. Although I think anything you put here is going to look better than what's there. So uh, I do agree with the comment that one of you made that I think there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you could do here to maybe capitalize on the industrial roots of the site. Uh, you know, yeah, there's a brick building, but next to it is the Eclara building, which is an entirely different type of structure. I mean, I could almost see a blend of uh, metals and brick, and I, I think there's a lot of creativity that could be done here. Uh, I don't think the buildings necessarily need to match. So uh, from a design perspective, you know, we have in our site plan regulations, and I don't like it, I've shared this before, New England-style architecture, because I don't think anybody can tell me what that is, uh, but I don't think it works here. So if there are waivers needed, I can tell you as one board member, I'm 
uh, on board with, with that uh, and look forward to whatever ideas you come up with. My last comment here is I really like the way that you've, and it's probably by necessity, I get it, right? But uh, the, the way the parking is addressed here, it's all of these little mini lots scattered across the site, and I get that it's the site drove that. But that appeals to me. It, it just, I think, has a better aesthetic. It provides more landscape opportunity. And I do think it does provide more treatment alternatives uh, for you in terms of the stormwater. So I think that's, it's wicked creative, even though the site probably drove you there. So we'll take the good luck where we have it. So uh, all in all, uh, very uh, favorable view of this project. A few points that, oh, I'm sorry. Well, real quick, just on the, the architectural piece, um, I forgot to mention uh, CJA is the architect on the project. So both Neil and CJA are finishing up a project with me in Dover right now, uh, the Old Stratford County Courthouse on First Street, uh, on Second Street, excuse me, but a new, very similar to this in that there's a new structure attached to it, um, which is on Second Street. Um, so same uh, core design team there. Um, and in terms of uh, aesthetic, uh, the my hope is that there's going to be three distinct but related aesthetics. There's going to be a brick building, the attached building to the brick, which is going to have one vernacular, and then the standalone building, which is going to have a related but independent um, styling to it. That is the objective. Uh, again, but budget constraints are, are real. I would love metal panel. Um, I'm being told that it's not in the budget, so, um, <laughs> but I'm trying. Sorry, go on. Oh, a few comments that I had. Um, in terms of the aesthetic of the site, I didn't think I could get happier until you said just that with the three separate styles. Um, Chinberg, one of the things that I've always been impressed by your developments is the degree of respect that you pay to the industrial heritage of a lot of the buildings that you work with. And you have less here because a lot of it burned down, but the fact that you're looking at incorporating a variety of aesthetics from the industrial heritage of the site and the community is extremely encouraging. Um, very, very pleased to hear that. And I'm with Mr. Whittem. The concept of a New England architecture is exceptionally vague, but here you're capitalizing on the industrial base of what was here. So very, very pleased to hear that. Um, you are a little bit limited in your pedestrian connections. One question that I'd have for city staff was if there's any easements with the sidewalk that extends onto a Clara's site or any options that we could explore to interconnect from that angle to assist here. Um, want to uh, comment on a feature that Mr. Richardson mentioned that I think Mr. Barry did as well. Um, the inclusion of the river walk and the fact that you intend that to be publicly accessible is extremely good to hear. I think you're planting the seed of something that can enhance this community greatly, that improves your site, improves the potential of nearby sites, and improves the potential of Summersworth as a whole. Could not be happier to hear that. Um, in terms of the, the need for a conditional use permit for the site, um, I think your uphill battle here is the site topography, not the need for those. Uh, if you can fight the slope that you're dealing with here, you're going to be fine getting a CEP for a disturbed site that's the site of an industrial fire. I think you're doing good things here, so I can't anticipate any issues with that. The water treatment strategy that you're using uh, for run runoff of multiple points it's commendable both for working with the site and for what it does as a whole. It reduces points of failure in uh, stormwater management, which particularly in a site that abuts a river is critically important. Uh, I really don't have enough good that I can say, or I have too much good that I can say about this, this property. In terms of parking, the one question I did have is, do you know a mix in terms of unit size that you're looking at at this point? Yeah, we typically do a, 40, 40, 20 mix. So 40% studio, 40% one bed, 20% two bed. Beautiful. I wouldn't have any concerns with the parking level that you're looking at there. I think a lot of the reason that we were fine with reducing the number at 45 Elm was because they had a mix that favored more of the smaller units. The fact that you're pushing further onto the studio side further militates, I think, towards a lower parking number on this site. Uh, so I'd have no concerns with that. The only real issue that I see here is one that you have absolutely no control over, and that's interconnection with the neighboring properties. But you're doing everything you can to increase the ability of those to interconnect in the future when those open up for redevelopment. Uh, I'm very excited to see what you bring back for a final plan. I very much appreciate you bringing this. Thank you. Uh, one, one more thought that occurred to me um, related to um, 
Councilor Wisdom, Widdom's comment, um, knowing that this is a, a significant change in use over the status quo of, of the vacant site over the last 20 some odd years, staff has encouraged us and we've agreed to host an informal community meeting before we do an official, before we come before the, the boards with our final submissions so we can have a bit of an education uh, slash listening um, moment so we can tell them what we're doing and hear their concerns. Um, uh, that obviously traffic and the appearance are probably going to lead that conversation, but um, we just want to make sure that people aren't being caught flat-footed. One final comment for any other developers watching. This is how this should be done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I took a drive by uh, on my way over here on the uh, site and I didn't seem to see any uh, erosion or silt uh, barriers around the site. They haven't started. And I'm mm. not sure what's uh, going on for the site. Is the city manager? No, I was oh, after him. Oh, gotcha. Do I do we need so it's just a it this do I need a silt barrier? There's no there's no active work on the site. Okay, yeah, I might be thinking about another site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's possible. Okay. No, I don't have anything to add. I'll just for the record say a, a wonderful project. Uh, excited about it and in favor of all the waivers and everything that uh, work with you to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you should have all received my background memo regarding uh, solar ordinance discussion. Uh, had a developer come in recently about ground-mounted solar in particular. As you know, the solar ordinance was adopted uh, back in October 2023, and uh, when it was adopted, the board talked about potentially uh, needing to change some of uh, the solar ordinances or the solar ordinance uh, so to allow for solar and have it be more flexible so the developer unfortunately was not able to come tonight uh, but the biggest concern uh, that the developer has is ground mounted solar height uh, that currently is only allowed to be 15 feet high and that includes the commercial and industrial districts so um, he's asking if the board would consider increasing the height uh, within those zones to 35 feet. Uh, also allow for ground mounted solar in the residential zones. Uh, the engineering requirement for review of roof uh, mounted solar, uh, ground mounted solar within the wetlands or wetlands buffers to allow for this use with appropriate approvals to revise the training requirement for fire and police and ambulance services to revise, revise the buffer requirements and to address blocking out sunlight and to classify solar collection systems as auxiliary systems to allow for small, medium, or large scale solar by CUP in the R2, R1A, R2, R2A, R3, RB, RC, RO, and um, MH. In addition, uh, to discuss the state uh, solar or, uh, RSA. So you have all received a red line version of the proposed changes and just seeing what the board's appetite is for potentially uh, in particular changing, coming back, having staff to look at this and coming back with uh, some changes. Mr. Belmar? Yeah, I was at a meeting. Um, I forget I, if he asked that I be there, city manager, or Michelle asked me to be there, so I was there. <laughs> and um, he was of the opinion that our ordinance was illegal, so I uh, made sure I reconnected with the city attorney, and it's legal. Uh, the only thing I told him I would be willing to, as one board member, pending discussion with the full board to reconsider 
uh, would be the height in the commercial industrial because there's a fair amount of them now, but I'm not interested in a lot of the other changes that he was asking about. But so if there was an there was a um, an opportunity or enough people here wanted to talk about that at a future meeting, need more information, uh, happy to talk about the height in those zones. But everything else, uh, I told him I'd at least mention that I was in support of at least reconsidering it if other board members wanted to do it. If not, I'm fine too. I'm not his advocate. Thank you. Um, I'm certainly not in a hurry to revisit our solar ordinance that we just passed. Uh, there was ample opportunity for public comment, uh, both at this level and at the city council level. Uh, I don't recall that there was any. Uh, so coming at us late in the gate, uh, late out of the gate is a little concerning to me. I think we need to give it a, a time to work is my, my humble opinion. Uh, I'm just one board member. If the board wants to revisit that, uh, I, I, that's a board decision and certainly I'd participate in that process. Uh, I could tell you that uh, I recall the conversations we had about ground mounted solar in the residential areas that most of our lots here in the city of Summersworth are small uh, and would not support that very well. Uh, there are very few areas of the city where the lot size is large enough to support uh, a system uh, that would uh, supply for a house, for example, which is why we stuck with roof-mounted solar in the residential area. So I'm not sure that helps out many people in the community, so I'm not sure why we would, would favor that. When you talk about the height of ground-mounted solar, uh, if you're talking 35 feet, obviously we're now, we, we, we must be talking about those solar trackers because typical ground-mounted solar is not 35 feet high. I've never seen that. Uh, so uh, I think we need to be careful about that. Uh, um, you know, I think most of us would agree that uh, depending where they are, they either fit in or they don't. Uh, and the way to handle that, I think, is through a waiver process uh, and not just to green light it all of the time. So some of the points that he makes here, I, I think I would not be willing to move on or can be handled by way of a waiver. Uh, uh, I'm not interested in revisiting it at this point. Give it time to work. Mr. Robitis and Mr. Berry. No, I don't. Um, I think uh, both Councilman Witham and the, and the city manager are spot on. I don't want to sit and regurgitate everything they both just said, but I agree. Mr. Rick? Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, so personally, I don't have a problem with the height. I, I get it. I mean, we have we have multiple of these ground, these tiltable units in, in city limits already, but I agree with, with Councilor Witham that we should let it sit. But let's observe, but yes, I think we should, we should earmark it and get it ready for the next revision. But the one thing that, that really drives me crazy here is, is here, um, 1933 D1 item C. Um, I will never support not having an engineering review. On a roof-mounted system, I don't like it. Um, the, the problem is that if it's not being reviewed by a professional that understands loading, they could fly right off the roof. They could hurt somebody. Um, I mean, it, either either a neighboring property could cause damage. You could damage their property. I mean, I mean, it, you start talking about insurance. I know that's not really our, our scope of work, but um, it, it doesn't seem right. So, if it's going to be installed, say, by a licensed installer, they're going to have a professional on staff that can sign and say, "Yes, this this is structurally sound." Um, you know, when, when we get a when we get a gust of wind, it's not going to go flying 500 feet off your property. Um, I'm not going to support that. That's it. Thanks. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, I, I think to some degree what's prompting a lot of this is I think everybody's getting mailings about getting your solar installed and it not costing you anything. And so I think it's getting people to, to think about it and look at opportunities they might have. But um, I, can't, I, I certainly can't see going with 35 feet in a residential area on any for anything, but <laughs> that's my own personal opinion. But um, 
You know, I, I guess I agree that let's let's see what we have and let's see if it works. And as Mr. Witham said, let's work on it on a, on a waiver basis. But uh, I think it's being generated by all the advertising that's going around right now. A couple of comments that I'd add here as well. Um, speaking of somebody who's a very large proponent of solar and has solar panels on the roof of their own home, I'm largely in favor of getting any reasonable solar installation into the city that can be. When we're talking about residential installations, those are largely the rooftop ones which are completely allowed under the ordinance that we have in here right now without restriction on residential properties. Um, when you're talking about the larger installations, the waiver process I would think would hold well for CI installation of those larger, taller units. And a lot of our CI properties, like a lot of our residential properties, are small footprints. So there is the potential impact on your neighbors if we allowed that by default. Um, one item that raised my eyebrows a bit on this, uh, similar to Mr. Berry's uh, item about the engineering study, uh, was to revise the training requirements for fire, police, and ambulance services. These are largely <clears throat> DC units, largely connected to inverters, largely something that fire, police, ambulance personnel may not have a great deal of experience with and may need to deal with in larger numbers. That's an absolute red line for me as well. I cannot imagine anybody in good faith suggesting we remove or significantly revise the requirements to bring emergency services personnel up to speed on something that's being installed in our city. I wouldn't be inclined to take another look at any of these for an ordinance with less than six months on the books. It, it seems insane. <laughs> yeah, I agree to, uh, I agree to let it, but let it work and see what issues that may come up. Because I think, uh, like you said, uh, like the board has uh, agreed, we've put uh, quite a bit of time and effort, and I think we've pretty much captured uh, most concerns. Any other comments? I don't think it requires any action. If in, I think we're good. Yeah, sounds it. The message was rather clear. Uh, moving on then to communications and miscellaneous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple uh, communications. Uh, the sports dome uh, may be coming back to the planning board for a site plan amendment for intersection uh, changes off of Willen Drive. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up of that. Um, <clears throat> Stratford Regional Planning Commission is going to be helping the city with a downtown parking study. I will send a memo about uh, information about this parking study. Uh, it's going to be kicking off in April. Uh, June planning board meeting falls on June 19th, which is a holiday for the city. And does the board have a preference on when the meeting is scheduled for that month? Next day, the 20th. Okay. I, I'll be, I will not be here that week. Okay. So. We'll send out a, a follow up email. Um, you want to send out like a monkey survey, make sure we have a quorum? Yep. Or maybe put another alternative date. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with the week after or week before, whichever. And that doesn't matter to me. Yeah, whatever works best for the group. <laughs> well, I just want to ensure there's a quorum, that's all. Yeah. Before we schedule. When Michelle's done, I had one comment. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Councillor uh, Witham, gave an update on the building permit software and i just wanted to give out a shout out to anna stockman because she was the one that really worked on getting all this information together and researching this so thank you for well, you the help started, on that I I was getting in trouble <laughs> <No>. <laughs> she coordinated all the demos with staff People and starting to yeah, sit up straight it was good <laughs> <laughs> nice job, so anna. thank you anna thank you for that <laughs> Just a, a flag for city staff. I noticed it yesterday or today, maybe both. Um, the under construction, the industrial storage condo units behind the Stewart's Ambulance Service building up on the hill there. Um, I noticed uh, 
yesterday or today that a uh, utility company was putting in utility poles. I don't recall a waiver from underground power to the site. So before they start stringing wire and put more utility poles in, we might want to say, hey, 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 you can't be doing that. So we will follow up tomorrow. <laughs> that has been an interesting project to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wanted to be respectful. Mr. Wilmer? Uh, two things. Number one, uh, thank you, Anna. And uh, it also includes planning software. So for all the applications that, uh, that come before us can be done electronically also and tracked. Um, in regards to um, the sports dome, my understanding is they're still having a lot of trouble uh, getting appropriate answers and responses from the state. So I think the level of uh, coming back might be an, uh, addressing it for a site plan amendment and maybe eliminating that uh, turning lane because that seems to be the issue. So I just want to make sure uh, uh, board members are willing to at least consider any argument they have or any presentation they have, and you might be willing to eliminate that. Uh, turning. It's no sense to encourage them to come back if we're not willing to be objective and perhaps give it a green light of eliminating it. So uh, I hope that adds to your thought process. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Is it made for you? Mr. Richardson? Yeah. Um, since the last time one of our favorite businesses out there out on High Street was in here, uh, as I've ridden by there at random times during the day and night on past Firestone, I've noticed the doors closed. Well, and maybe it's because it's winter time and we'll see what happens as it warms up, but I've been very pleased as I've driven by there and seen the doors close. So. Mr. Has to follow up on Mr. Belmore's comment on the sports dome. Uh, if they do seek a waiver, I would invite board members to go out and drive a will and drive. If you get out to the intersection at Route 108, that is a very wide uh, road. Uh, it actually supports turning traffic uh, to go north without actually identifying a lane. So, uh, absent some other detail, I'm probably in support of that. Mr. Horton? Uh, I would just echo those comments as well. I would I would support hearing uh, feedback from the Sports Dome. Uh, on a separate note, uh, I want to say thanks to city staff, city council for approving the Complete Streets Constitution Way project. So good to hear that uh, moving forward, and look forward to seeing that work begin. Mr. Uh, maybe this is a question towards the city manager. Would we be able to? let that project continue to move forward with a worst case scenario that they don't get approval for that but ask them to keep that process in play so if it happens they could still put that turning lane in uh, would that make sense I think we already like did it too, too we already time? allowed a building permit with well, the notation that uh, if uh, at their risk that they don't get DOT approval but they're concerned about their schedule and right what it really means because they also my understanding is they also want them to acquire an easement on the other side of the road for traffic going southbound, which means they have to negotiate with property owners. And we have a, a complete streets project on 108 coming up in, you know, less than a handful of years. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They're gonna to lock me, them. at least. They're going to lock them down. Okay. Yeah, commenting on the, the 108 interconnection and the issues that they're having there, I think when we approved this, the work on 108 was much more distant than it is now and they've been held up with the dot for Too literally long. years at this point it it seems matter of fact i felt bad for bill doobie because they're thinking they're going to put an application in and it's going to happen real quick and we're like for well, the changes out on 108 i don't see that happening yeah. but i hope they have better luck i'm inclined to work with anyone who's trying to do something on that area without the state getting in their way. Any other comments this evening? Move to adjourn. Second. Well, uh, motion by Mr. Abayas, seconded by Mr. Widom. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, everyone.